Welcome back to the Touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osorio. You can also get in touch with us using the hashtag Touchline Y254 and tell us where we're watching us from. It is a sports Saturday, a beautiful Saturday afternoon. And this afternoon, I'm privileged to talk to one of the sports journalists who has gone ahead to create sports literature in Kenya. It is literature that we don't usually find around, but this time around, it is here and we are going to talk about it. I've got the privilege to include Zach Oguda in this con conversation. Zach, welcome to Y254. It's not your first time coming on to Y, but this time around, you have come here to talk about your book, Away From Victory. Uh, thanks, Robert, for having mm. me. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, true. This is my first time here. Yeah. Um, I've taken a, a bit longer, not that long, but due <laughs> yes. to commitments uh -huh. here and there, yeah. I haven't been able to visit your show uh, the more times I would have liked to. But I'm glad that finally I'm back here mm -hmm. and uh, back with good things and greater things that uh, we might want to inform the viewers and every other person about. Let's, let, let, let's go ahead and talk about this book, Away from Victory, Pain, Politics and Privilege in Kenyan Football. That is the cover of the book, Away from Victory. What does the book entail when you, let's st start with the title itself, Away From Victory. What did you entail in the book? Away From Victory itself, mm -hmm. uh, without putting the rest of the things that you've said, yeah. Away From Victory itself came from the journey we've taken. That uh, be this being an Afghan year. It's yes. like we've taken 15 years to make it to Afghan. Yes. So away from victory, uh, a lot of people have been celebrating the victory of us going to Afghan. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of things that have happened yes. apart from that victory. Yes. So we need, in the book, I focus on things that pertain, things that are not in the victory itself, but mm -hmm. things that are away from that victory yeah yeah that's basically it uh, so in the uh pain politics and privilege in yes. kenyan football uh -huh. that's when um i talk about things that have not made us be at par with the rest in, on the continent yeah uh we are a footballing nation and mm -hmm. uh every other person feels like uh, we should always be competing with the best in the continent yes but the 15-year gap, there are a lot of things that happened in between. Mm -hmm. So most of those things are entailed in the book. So this major major book since 2004 to 2018. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the book itself, you have had major chapters that you have written in the book. And one of them, I, you will have to explain to us and understand it, is rewarding the lieutenants. That's your first chapter in the book. It is about kickbacks in the game, and as everything happens in the game, or how do you frame that in the book? Uh, that's chapter one of the book, regarding yeah. lieutenants. Uh, yeah. It's not about kickbacks and every other thing. Yeah. Uh, you find that in every other Afghan squad that we had, that was in 204, yeah. and this year, mm -hmm. um, people ask question, why is so-and-so in the team? Why is so-and-so not in the team? Yeah you find out that uh, there are a lot of people who are in the team yeah. because of the association with the guys in power. Uh -huh. When you look at 204, when yes. we went to Tunisia for AFCON, yes. there are a lot of questions that were, where people ask, ask coach Jacob Gostmule why he had ferried Daniel Waweru who had yeah. a neck injury, injury. Yes. to the competition when there were a lot of players who could have done better than Oweru. Yes. Uh, that's reflected in the current team where you find someone like Masud Jumo who's not played for the past uh -huh. six months yes. getting a nod ahead of people like Alan Wanga and Jesse Oweru. Uh -huh. So that's in a way is a rewarding guys who are closer to the federation. Yes. So that's the rewarding duty. They, they are not there because of merit. Yes. They are there because, because of they are being factors. rewarded. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's a very big answer that you have got there because it has been a big conversation in the country for a very long time yeah. that we are getting. The coach cannot select a lineup himself with this technical bench. The lineup has to come from the office. But it has not happened only in the national team, also in football clubs. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's something uh, generally, you know, for me, I wanted to concentrate on the national team because you see, now that's the major thing about every, every other person who plays even in the National Super League, the Kenyan Premier League, even the Division One. Yes. Every other person strives 
to play for the national team. Uh -huh. So the road has to start up there. We have to speak about the road up there. Then maybe we might want to reflect the things that happen at the top yeah. with the things that happen at club level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a big one there that we are going to talk about. But then there's the big one, Harambe Stars. Harambe Stars. I usually have the idea that we are not a big footballing nation since, since when we made it into the Africa Cup of Nations back in 72. Yep. For the five editions that we played in the Africa Cup of Nations, we have the one that we are going to play this. We have only won one match. We have never got out of the group stage. Of the competitions that people talk about here at home, the only competition we are proud of is the Sakafa Senior Challenge Cup. Am, am I right? Am I wrong? Uh, you are right. You are right. You see... Just put the mic. Sorry. Change. For yes. someone who's uh, walked or for someone who's traveled even mm. in this overseas country, yeah. we're known as an athletics country, country not yeah. a footballing nation, mm -hmm. something of that sort. Yeah. But... For me, I think at times it's just a perception and how we run things. You see, we yes. have a lot of talented guys who can play football, just as the same as we have a lot of talented guys who can do athletics. Yes. So the problem here is the systems that are in football, mm -hmm. they don't favor the footballers or any aspiring person. So the thing that we have to do is to find the right guys at the help of our ambassadors. As yeah. uh, in chapter two, yeah. I've talked about coaches mm -hmm. uh, who at times are just being placed because uh, of the transition or every other thing. You look yes. like someone like Okumbi when Nick Mondo came to power. Yes. We just had to do with Bobby Williamson mm -hmm. without being given any reasons yeah. why the man was going out. And then he gave us Okumbi. Yes. Okumbi di didn't even last. We had Paul Put. Paul Put mm -hmm. barely lasted. Yeah. Now we have uh, Minye. Yes. So these are things that, uh, I mean, uh, jeopardizes that uh, free flow of, uh, I think, cohesion. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just pick someone today, then pick someone tomorrow. Yes. I mean, it's a bit of this orientation in a way, and that affects football in a so, 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 so much yeah. way. Yeah. Well, what do you think changed in, in the way you have written the book we took 15 years to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations. In 72, when we qualified for the first time, until the second edition in 88, we took another 16 good years to qualify. And that, at the middle there, they brought things like the Olympic Youth Centers. What do you think has been the major problem for us not making it to be a powerhouse in football? It's, it's a combination. I'll say I won't blame any individual any, any specific individual yes but i think it's a it's a collection of things yes uh you find out that uh, i think the budget was read the other day yes yeah you find the money they give for, uh, to sports it's not something you might want to be proud of as mm -hmm. a sportsman yeah. and uh the money that's given again you find again in the in the federation they make it even worse the little mm -hmm. they get yeah. uh uh, specifically in the previous federation, I want to believe that the current federation has done a bit well the money they've been given. Yeah. But when you look at the money that was given in the Sam Nyamwea era, mm -hmm. you couldn't uh, well define where how they used the money because Nick says he entered the federation, found it with a lot of debt. So you wonder what happened. So it basically duels with the leaders we have in football. Yes. I don't think they're doing the right things for us to grow. For the leaders in football, do you think the level of education is a worry? Because when you look at, since independence, yes. not only in Kenya, yeah. but most of the countries in Africa, yeah. people, leaders got themselves in situations which they never knew what was happening. We had people coming into football management not knowing what football management entails. They did not go to school to learn football. They yeah, never yeah. played football, but they were there to manage the club. Up to today, we've got club president, club chairman who run football, yet they don't understand football. Do you think it's a curse to us that these people never went to school and do not understand sports? It's not a curse as per se. I think mm -hmm. uh, I'd given that a chapter, but let me just touch on it. Um, you see people come to football with different uh aims yes. people are not into football to make football great the way the guys in england do yeah. i had even proposed that we it's better we even had uh, a private entity in football you see like the english fa is a private entity yes see, for a private entity you have to work to mm -hmm. earn another contract yes that is so you see in football people come with different ideas mm -hmm. mostly for political reasons yes 
when you look at people like Peter Kenneth, mm-hmm. Joe Bomino, mm-hmm. um, uh, Nyamwe at some point yes. he wanted to vie for governorship or any other thing. Mm-hmm. There's a rumor he might want to vie for a political seat in the yeah. coming future. Mm-hmm. I don't know how true that is. But people come to football with a l- lot of different reasons than football itself that is yes. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think if that's going to be sorted, and yeah. I've spoken about that in uh, football and politics. Yes. There's a chapter on it. Yeah. That's that that actually the, the ninth chapter. Yes, I yeah. think that will say a lot about every other thing that's wrong with our leadership in football. Yeah. yeah. More so one of our major biggest clubs in the country. But before we get there, you have a chapter on us. And that's the <laughs> meaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a chapter on us. <laughs> and <laughs> where have we gone wrong? Uh, before we say where we have had it right. Yeah. Tell Ac- us actually, wh- wh- what, <laughs> what about us? Actually, you're the yeah. first person who was asking me about the media since I started. Uh, <laughs> people book. have not been asking. Yeah, they've not it. been asking that chapter. You see, now <laughs> uh, they portray my book as a book that hits the federation, yeah. hits the fans. Uh-huh. But again, I've spoken about the media. I've been part of the media myself. Yes. I'm still in the media yeah. industry. Uh-huh. You and me know mm. there are a lot of things that happen in the media industry. Yes. You see, this book alone, I didn't. I don't think I did it for again football again. This yes. is a book that I wanted out there mm. to make each and every other individual who mm. has a dream. Yeah. I can't say I had the best of education in life or I had the brightest of upbringing, but this yes. was just to encourage every other person that had a dream yeah. to do something mm-hmm. that any other thing. With ambitions, with dedication. I, I understand it's, you. You left media. You left medical school. Yes, to for pursue journalism. Yes. Yeah. So you see, those are things that uh, <laughs> maybe you might feel like one or one time your parents don't want now to associate with you, things like that, yeah. because you've decided what they want uh-huh. and you're doing what now you want. Uh-huh. So my aim here was to boom, make guys feel that every other things are achievable. Apart from that, on the media. Yes. Um, there are a lot of things that we do. Yes. Like media now, it's not like the media we had in yester years. Mm-hmm. It's like right now when I'm in your show mm. and um, a sponsor comes. Yes. Like right now he says, I want uh, my show to run from two to four. Yes. Like uh, I don't want to mention names, these mm. corporate, corporate. Yeah. When they come and say, I want my show to run from two to four, yeah. you won't be having me here. Uh-huh. Because you see now they pay for that. Yes. And see now me, I can't pay for that. So mm-hmm. whether they speak rubbish or they speak things that are not mm-hmm. entailed in the game, yeah. you have to give them the audience because yeah. at the end of the day, this may be where... That's how you make our money. That's how you yeah. make your money. So yeah. I've always felt like advertisers mm-hmm. have gotten to media that much yeah. that we've lost that... We credibility have, wow. part of it yeah so mm-hmm. it happens in football mm-hmm. it happens even in the political things not yes. in football alone in every yeah. other places uh-huh. you find uh, out that um for guys to cover like those secondary school games uh-huh. which don't have like sponsor or, or something it's it's a bit of a difficulty but yeah. you find guys cover golf because yes. the corporates coming corporate on board, side, yes. the corporates who can uh, help the company push a thing or two. Mm-hmm. You're getting my point. So that's what I've spoken about the media. We yeah. should stay away from these things where we force mm-hmm. uh, like interns or we force guys who work under us yeah. to do things because there's someone up there who said this thing should be done this for, way. For the growth of football and where Kenyan football is at the moment, yeah. do you think we have done our job as the media? Do you think we have sat down, we have gone to our, back to our newsroom, our news desk, and written objectively about Kenyan football and said, even as we can set an agenda as the media? We have done, we have done our best. Yeah. Uh, I hope your editor will forgive me. <laughs> no, no, but we've, open yeah. <laughs> so we have done <laughs> our best. Forum. We've done our best. My yeah. main problem in places that I've worked with is yeah. you find... Someone like you, Robert, should yes. go to the field to get your good story, news of the story, yes. some, something that should be consumed mm-hmm. by those, every other person who likes football. Yeah. But when you come, you find like your piece is edited in a way that you don't like, uh-huh. in a way that you yeah. don't like it to get out there. Yes. So now that's out of your hands. Yes. So, but when it goes out there, it goes with Robert's name. Yeah. It goes so, with my byline. Yes, with your yeah. byline. Yeah. So when people see you out there, say, ah, this guy, ah, this guy is the other guy who speaks badly about the other, other uh-huh. thing. Yeah. Yes. When in the real sense, you might uh-huh. find that words are added that even you, you don't understand. Uh-huh. I've worked in places where um, 
you do a song and they'll tell you that's how you can't go up mm-hmm. because of a b and c uh-huh. this is a story that you've been sent to do somewhere but they tell you yeah. it can't go up mm-hmm. but you see by by the end of the month you have to pay your bills and every other thing yes so you just have to live with the system at some point yeah so for the media gave them this just to give them that urge of um, even with the challenges that they face in every other thing they do mm-hmm. probably the media was for the interns and the guys who are upcoming yeah in every other challenges that they face, yeah. they shouldn't give up hope. Maybe there's one day that they'll do every other thing they correct you that's decided. Now, for you as a journalist and writing this book, yeah. what kind of challenges did you go through? Did you get people talking to you one-on-one and saying, hey, let's talk, let's put this thing into perspective and all that. How hard was it for you to write this book? Um, I had to stop at some point. Uh, cumulatively, I think I did this book for around three years, but I had to stop for some time. Uh-huh. I think if every other person was to cooperate, yeah. it might have taken less years. Uh-huh. This is because you see, when I'm coming to talk to you about your boss, you yeah. might want to, you might not want to talk about him. Yes. So I'll have to look for another source. Uh-huh. Then, if even you will be able to speak about the things that are happening in your places of work, yes. you won't want to be quoted. Uh-huh. So, in this book, there are a lot of people who didn't want to be quoted because yeah. it touched on... Actually, I knew it was going to rub shoulders with people. Yeah. But there are people who say, don't reveal our names, yes. which I concealed. Mm-hmm. Right but there are people who came out and say, my friend, me have nothing to lose. Yeah. I have my businesses. I mm-hmm. don't have an association with anyone. Yes. Just quote me. That's someone like Bonfire Sambani. Mm-hmm. Ambani is very, was very categorical in this book. Yes. And I liked how he did his things. Mm-hmm. My biggest challenge in every other thing, the biggest challenge I had in this book was with the ladies. Because yes. you see, in this country, the ladies' football is not doing that well. Uh-huh. But out of 10 ladies yeah. I pursued, there's none who was willing to talk. To talk. Yeah. So they couldn't get a chapter. Oh, I wish they had a chapter in the book. Wow. So yeah. the ladies are out of this book. They are out of the, that book. But I hope I'll do for yeah. them something in the future. And then you've got a chapter on... Forever Young. Forever okay. Young is basically, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny thing. Oh, yeah. During the launch, someone asked me about that. Yeah. Forever Young, you, uh, the other day you saw FKF profile their players for AFCON. Yes. Yes, someone like Josh, you find he's 23 years old. <laughs> this uh, one is about age cheating. That's about age <laughs> cheating. So no one wants to be old. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Someone like Josh, someone I wondered, I started watching when I think I was in class seven because he used to play around our area down there. Yes. I'm 28 right now. The guy is 23. But so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering how, how, how people count ages. Maybe it's using the Ethiopian calendar or the Chinese one. Yeah, but but sure. this age cheating has been a major problem because I remember our under-20 team was disqualified from yeah, the for, World Cup qualifier yeah. because of age cheating. How yes. bad is it? It's a bad, bad thing. And yeah. I think it's an African thing. Yeah. Uh, I heard that even the European nation, there are people who do it. But you see, it's not even the under 20 alone that yes. you are disqualified for. Well, we went for our last cover, the under 17s cover that I think was in Burundi. Yes. I think uh, three of our players were disqualified for the tournament. The same happened with Uganda, I think, and TZ. Mm-hmm. I think it's the Somali team that was clean. The other teams had Problems. one or two players picked out yes. because of. And so when these guys go he, in here, the federation will tell you they've gone through the uh, um, MRI scans, yes. every other thing is set. That tells you a lot. I mean, um, if you given documents of players, uh, like uh, someone like Paul Luere, I'm told, during his time, at his first thing at FC Leopards, yes. he had um, his uh, passport as a born 1991. Yes. But right now, if you look at Paul Luere's profile and what FKF gave us, yes. the dude is born in 1995. Wow. So that's a difference of four years. Yes. I want to imagine that when he wrote the 1991 thing, maybe he had slashed a bit of another Ana- year. Some, uh, another two, yeah, three so years there. You might find this guy slashed his years yeah. with about seven years. Wow. So when you're going to go to uh, to Europe for yeah. a game, yeah. they'll consider you like uh, a toddler. They'll see yeah. in Europe they have very different way age of training. Yeah, yes. age groups of training. Yeah. So they'll be training with the kids. Yeah. If they're going to give you that high intensity game, yeah then you won't make it, you won't last for a lot of years. And that's what has delayed our football in this country. Wow. Yeah. There's a funny one there, forever young. But it's a big secret that is happening there. 
And then now there's the big giant in the room. Yeah. And that is the Kenyan Premier League. We have to talk about the Kenyan Premier League because that is what we majorly cover yes. in Kenyan football. Yes. What do you talk about in the Kenyan Premier League? The Kenyan Premier League, as we said earlier, I think uh, it revolves around management. Yes. And uh, these are guys who are going to be sent home mm -hmm. come next year. That's what FKF said. Yeah, they yeah, won't yeah. be continuing with yeah. the good and co. Uh -huh. If you look at the Kenyan Premier League right now, the, I think uh, the winner gets uh, up to around 4 to 5 M. Four million. Four okay. million. Yeah, that that alone can't even be a two month budget for Goldmayer. Goldmayer's budget is five million a month. A month. Yeah. So I mean, uh, Wood and Co are not being realistic. Mm -hmm. They haven't sold the game the way it should be. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do their marketing strategies and every other thing and mm -hmm. the people he has around. But I think they've failed the nation as a whole. Yeah. Because you see, the Kenya Premier League is a place where we expect scouts to come. We don't expect a scout to go to a Division 1 and watch a yes. game uh -huh. unless it's referred by someone. So yes. Kenya Premier League uh, with the broad... Actually, firstly, we don't have the broadcasting, the st right. a serious broadcasting partner that will give us the game the way Supersport did. Yes. Sorry for announcing that in the show. But we need KPL or Good & Co to have guys around them uh -huh. to market our league in a way that we not only benefit the guys here, yeah. but we can transport our talents overseas. That's how you want to build a national team. Yeah. If we have a lot of internationals who play in those international leagues, then we improve the quality of the national team. Yeah. You can't just pick every other player in the Kenyan Premier League to play for your national team if yeah. you want to compete with the best in Africa. Wow. The Kenyan Premier League started in 2006, yes. uh, back in 2006. And it has been all for this time round. Marketing has been a major problem yes. for the Kenya Premier League. What else has been bad for them? Apart from marketing, I think uh, you see, for you to attract good things, you have to be good. Yeah. Yes. Professionally. Professionally, in every other thing you do. Yeah. When you're going to have a team that gives like three walkovers, uh -huh. even if a corporate is not in yet, yeah. that will give an image of what you people are doing. Yes. I mean, there's no serious team in a top flat league mm -hmm. that will give three walkovers. Yeah. It's never happened. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's how you run your things. Apart yeah. from the walkovers, uh, who, I mean, who will we go to if you want this? Mm -hmm. you, uh, who is where? Yes. That's something that I think is not well defined in KPL. Yeah. You find that, like, in every other company that we do, it's always Jaco Guda who's up. Yes. When you ask Jaco Guda, who is he working with? I don't think so many people know uh, about guys who work around Jaco Guda. The technocrats. The technocrats Kenya about in the Kenya Premier League. People don't know them. People don't know that it's the club uh, chairman, chairman yeah. who run, who majorly run the league. This yeah. is something they don't know. So uh, there's a lot of information that they're hiding that I don't know yeah. why. If they get a deal, like the copies that they have, they don't want to reveal the real deals that they have. Yeah. Like a lot is under the table. Yes. So if a corporate is going to come, we'll first see how you do your things. Yeah. If you're doing things shabbily, then definitely they'll be out. They won't want to get what involved. What about the war between the Premier League and the Federation itself? That has been our major, another, another, another major worry for us. Yes. Because you see, the Federation wants to run the league. Mm -hmm. That's what FIFA says. says. Yeah, but the KPL says they had a deal mm -hmm. with the federation that went. Yes, that deal expires yeah. next year, 2020. 2020. Yeah. So, I pray that the entity that we are going to have to run yeah. our league in 2020 mm -hmm. yeah. will work in tandem with the federation. Yeah, and I hope that when they are working in tandem with the federation, mm -hmm. they'll be able to point out the problems that they see in the federation yeah. you see when you're going to work with someone and you just say yes man yeah then we won't have any progress so it's they are i'll wish the big guys who know what they do and yeah. the guys who point at the wrongs when there is a wrong yeah yeah well we are still talking to zach so good who is a journalist here in kenya sports journalist and this is first book he has written away from football that is dealing with the pain the politics and the privilege in kenyan football kenyan football started way back in 1926 with the gossage cup that is one of the most recognized competitions that have been brought up and also we had the likes of the remington cup yep. in the 40s and we have got other journalists who have written books we have got the 
legendary Roy Gashui, who uh, wrote his book also. And uh, we've got Joe Kadenge's book that was written by John Nene. It yes. was a big one for you. We have got also Wandera Gilbert. He wrote the, a the book Wanga on uh, book. Alan Wanga. Yeah. And now we have got Away from Victory by Zachary Oguda, who also writes, you usually, you wrote for soccer. Soccer then, you, then right you, now I'm at Futa. Futa.com. Yes, Futa.com. Yeah. But he's still writing for us here on Away from Ball. The major question will be, your inspiration to write the book, where did it come from? Uh, my inspiration was, um, I'd seen, uh, I'd, uh, let me not say it's a gap, as per se, yeah. but I felt there's more about football that people are not saying. Yes. Like right now in your station, you mm. can't talk about every other thing. Yeah. Maybe you'll just touch on them, uh, majorly because of time yeah. and every other thing. Mm -hmm. But you see with a book, you can do any other thing you want. Yeah you have the liberty of saying what you want uh, mm. as, as long as there are credible things and you get yeah. credible interviews from people. Yeah. So in, in a book, I felt we should have more people yeah. who, to write more about things yeah. that have not been said before. Yeah. Actually, in this book, in every other chapter, yeah. anyone can just write a book about the chapter. You see, when you're talking about Gormai, Gormai is a very, very big club with a yeah. very, very rich history. Uh -huh. yes. Someone can just do a book about Gormai. Yeah. Some can, can just do a book about edge cheating. Yes. So, someone can just do a book about Arambisters. Yeah. So I, me, I just wanted to touch on simple, major simple things, topic. major, major topics. Yeah. But I feel there's still a lot of things to write about, yeah. uh, apart from uh, our mainstream media and every other thing. Yeah. And this is the way we should go to have every other thing covered. Yeah. Before I talk about the fans and yes. the instability in Gormaya, yeah. club licensing was a major, major deal in Kenyan football. When CAF said that everybody has to conform to club licensing, they said that all our clubs have to conform to club, club licensing. Yes. But we went ahead to give clubs licenses to go ahead and participate, yet they are not good enough to participate. How dire and bad was it for club licensing in Kenya? Uh, club licensing, majorly, what I did was uh, on Moroni Youth and Thika United and a bit yes. of Sofa Parker. Yeah. Because those are the clubs that felt that uh, the been all operation changed. was uh, like meant to target them. Yes, that's what other gala still believes. That's mm -hmm. what the guy from Tikka United still believes. Mm -hmm. And you see, you can't say like they were wrong. Yeah, because in club licensing, every other club was needed. Apart from the financial statement, every other club was needed to have a youth team. Yes, every other club was needed to conform with the. I mean, they find how they pay players. Yes. That's every other player ought to have an account where money is streamed and every other thing. Mm -hmm. A functioning office and the entire things that you need in a professional club. Yes. But you see now, Moroni Youth, Tika United and Sofa Park were locked out at some point. Yes. A club like Gormaya, mm -hmm. uh, Kakamega Homeboys, and um, let's say, Ulinzi is a bit good. And uh, let's say Tasca were given the green light. Mm -hmm. In that club licensing, I want to tell you that when I was working for soccer, yeah. uh, we had this, uh, the monthly award thing, where yes. we award players who performed well yes. monthly. So there's a time that Kagere had uh, won that month's award. Mm -hmm. That's after being after the club had been given the certificate yes. to participate. They had given, they'd been given the green light that they passed the club licensing thing. Mm -hmm. But when Kagere came to the office, definitely you're going to give him his money yes. through his bank account. Uh -huh. Because we, we don't deal with cash. You yes. see how the institution work. Yes. The guy told us him he doesn't have any bank account. That we need to wire the money. Actually, he came with a bag, a very big bag. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted the Give money. Me my money. He has the cash, cash in yeah. cash. Yeah. So we asked if that was something that happened to every other person at Gottman. He said, no, there are people who have accounts, but yeah. him, he doesn't see the need of an account. Yeah. So we asked if this is how he runs his thing. He told us that's how he's been doing it with the club. Yeah. So that alone will tell you the club licensing criteria wasn't followed to the latter. Yeah. If you look at the clubs now, how many clubs have like youth teams? Mm -hmm. How many clubs will you say they have their fi right financial? You see the Nakumata, uh, the Mount Kenya, Mount Kenya. Team the other time. Yeah. They, they can't even pay players. Yes. These are clubs that pass the club licensing thing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't say, you can't rubbish the other gala comments that the club licensing was meant to target them yeah yeah so it was a nice nice idea if you ask me yeah. but the way it was implemented was where they got it wrong yeah yeah 
finally you talk about the fans yeah right i mean um fans are demanding a lot you've seen it with the federation every yeah. time you ask question every time we ask question they say ah you're negative you don't want to support your own things of that sort yeah but that's a worldwide thing you people will ask why Messi is not in argentina squad why dibala is not in things yes. like that is an yeah. is a worldwide thing yeah but now the problem with the federation we have is when every other time we ask questions they take it on a personal level yeah. like ah robert doesn't want the federation to succeed yes yeah, so or good at yeah. the federation yeah. because you're asking questions you see these are guys who are not used to be asked questions yeah. my point here on the fans chapter was we have a very very demanding lot yeah as long as me maybe they want us not to ask questions i think at times we go overboard yes like i remember when um we were playing ghana here at mm. home yeah so when the team bus was entering the stadium i could see the fans tell guys akina bur kina masela that ah leo mnakula tano yeah yes leo mnakula tano yes yeah these are these are your home fans yeah. they're telling you my friends yeah. this team is no joke i yeah. mean five yeah. five and you are at home yeah. so you see even for the players themselves the mental mm-hmm. i mean you enter in your stadium you expect guys who behind you yeah we're telling them when when you stand no chance i mean yes. so that's where i had the problem with the fans and i've yes. hit them in some two or three pages on that nini yeah. i mean if you go through it you'll find it so every other person is touching this book it's not about the federation and yeah. any other person uh-huh. i've touched on every other major aspect that has derailed yeah. our game well away from victory by zachary okuda is our newest book in kenyan football you should read it where can we find the book and how much does it go for the book goes for a thousand shillings mm-hmm. there's a pay bill number that i normally share on my social media handles that's mm-hmm. zach zach so good on facebook zach so good on twitter and zach so good on instagram yeah the book can be found in a place called there's a bookshop called uh narok book club mm-hmm. narok book club um, is situated in town mm-hmm. along monrovia street it's just a starting business you see i'm one guy who likes promoting upcoming yes projects yeah imagine they've been doing online Sense. work yeah like when you want your book it's delivered where you are countrywide yeah maybe at a fee the other shillings is for guys who want to collect their books at the cbd uh-huh. but when you're in kisumu or whether in Turkana, yeah you'll just need to know how much you need to send to send that via courier service or any other thing yeah but you'll get the book in every other place okay yeah thanks a lot Zachary, this is one of the books that we have. The forward has been written by Bonface Ambani and Sami Omolo. My director is asking if you have a soft copy. No, no, no. I'm still not. Do- I'm not still not doing soft copies because yeah. uh, I had a very bad experience with the Michelle Obama book. Aha, uh-huh, becoming. Becoming. Yes. Yeah. So you see, for Michelle Obama, <laughs> yeah. she is already made it. So yeah. At least she did some good copies. Yeah. But the soft copies that were out, yeah. I think, dented her the sales the of sales the book. of that book yeah. you say i've taken a lot of time to publish this yeah. uh-huh. and in the in the city for money so i'll yeah. still eat fast then if <laughs> i feel like i want to give you free things yeah. i'll give you so that you can photocopy and sell for guys for 50 shillings the way they used to be doing yeah yeah well thanks a lot zachary for coming we are still on with zachary good on our next edition of the africa cup of nations we'll be talking everything harambe stars as they prepare for their game this evening at 7 p.m in madrid against drc of Congo and we'll be having Ronald Okot the sofa Parker striker and former FC Leopards player Idi Shikanda to talk about the progress of Arambe Stars as we head on to the Africa Cup of Nations but before we do that let's look at the road to the Africa Cup of Nations for major teams and this is an nostalgic feel of the Africa Cup of Nations draw that was done in Egypt in 2019 early this year for the preparations of the tournament itself in Egypt